Hey Lifehouse families, can we just say that we miss you and your kids' smiling faces? Oh, you miss us too? Well, on behalf of Lifehouse Kids and Youth, we want to personally invite you to meet us over on Zoom every Sunday for 30 minutes starting at 9 a.m. Make sure to head over to lifehousekids.church to sign your kids up for their connect group. We can't wait to see you Sunday.
Hey, online family, it's Kristen. And it's your boy Christian. And look, we are really excited to be with y'all today on Easter Sunday. Yes, today is one of those days that reminds us why we believe what we believe and that in Jesus we always have hope no matter what obstacles we face in life. Absolutely. And this is your first time joining us. We just want to say thank you for being here and we are glad that you are with us today. Make sure to fill out the digital connection card if you haven't done so already so we can stay connected with you and get you a free gift. The link to that is in the chat below. As we all know, this past year or so has been so far from normal. So we decided to do something a little different for Easter at Lifehouse this year. We wanted to tell you the story of Jesus from a fresh perspective, so we put together something new and special to really bring the story closer to home. That's right. So Lifehouse fam, let's prepare our hearts to worship together. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. What's up all my family? It's that time again. It's time to give God some praise. If you're ready, put some praise hands in the chat. Hey, 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 hey. We're going to sing about that glorious day. We serve a God that did not stay dead, but he's alive. And because he's alive, we're alive. Ain't that some good news, y'all? Hey. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn to what till I met you. Hey, I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. With every act, we say this together. You called my name, then I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Your mercy has saved. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom, yeah. Now your freedom is all that, that I know. Be all made new. Be all made new. Jesus, when I met you, Jesus, when I met you, what a day when you call my name. Let me hear you. sin was heavy y'all was weighing me down but chains break at the weight of your glory that's literally what the word glory means it's the weight of who God is we just want to see your glory in our lives Jesus we thank you that you break every chain you break every chain Woo! you break every chain Jesus this part just goes like this I need it rest I needed a rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open.
Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Lifehouse for Easter Online. My name is John Lee, pastor here, and we just want to say happy Resurrection Sunday. We are so glad that you are joining us today, and we would love to know who is joining us today and where you are joining us from. So right now within the comment section, would you just put who you are and where you're joining us from, what city, state, we would love to know who is joining us today. And we are so excited you're joining us, but we wanna send a special shout out to all of those who are possibly joining Lifehouse today for the very first time. We just wanna say welcome. We are so stoked that you are joining us today for the first time. And we would love just to send you a, a small gift, just as a, a small way of saying thank you for joining us today. And, if, and you can actually do that by giving us a little bit of information by filling out the digital connection card that you're gonna see in the comment section. If you would just click on that and fill that out for us, like I said, we just wanna send you just a very small gift for joining us today at Lifehouse for the first time. And for those of you who call Lifehouse Church home, welcome. One of the things that we do every Easter at Lifehouse is something we call our annual Easter survey. And what this does, it gives us a pulse uh, to hear back from, from you of how we can love and serve you the absolute best. Like we want to know what sermon topics would help you the absolute most. We want to know what are the biggest barriers you're facing in knowing God right now. We want to know what is the next step on your faith journey that you need to take. We just want to know a little bit more about what is going on in your life so we can love and serve you better. So right now you're going to see within the comment section a link to our annual Easter survey. If sometime today during the service, after the service, if you would just take about 90 seconds and fill that out for us. We would greatly appreciate it as we game plan and we say, how can we love and serve you the absolute best? Well, all right, Lifehouse family, we're gonna go ahead and dive into today's Easter message. We're doing something a little bit differently. We're doing a short film and right after the short film, I'll come up uh, and wrap things up and share with you a couple reminders about Resurrection Sunday. So get your heart, your mind, and your spirit ready to receive today. Let's dive in. You may or may not have heard about a man who lived a long time ago named Jesus. Some people say he was a holy man who was very spiritual and did a lot of good things for people. Some say he was a great teacher with much wisdom. Some say he was a prophet who could hear from God. Regardless of what people think about Jesus, no one can deny his place in history. He was a real man that walked on the earth and we are still captivated by his story after a thousand years later. And what makes Jesus controversial to so many is who he claimed to be. Jesus made the claim to everyone around him that he was not just a holy man, not just a wise teacher or a great prophet, but he was God in the flesh. He claimed to be the long awaited savior of the world and that whoever believes in him would not spend eternity apart from God, but with him. And as you can imagine, the religious leaders of his day did not take too kindly to his claims. This was blasphemy that someone would dare say that they were the promised Messiah that people had been waiting for, even though Jesus fulfilled every prophecy that was made about who the Messiah would be. So because of this, they plotted to kill Jesus, to silence his message. He was betrayed even by many of his own followers, including a man named Judas, someone he traveled with, laughed with, ate with on a daily basis. One of his most devoted followers denied they even knew him the night he was illegally arrested and falsely accused. His own people turned their backs on him and when offered a chance to save him from death, chose to have a criminal released instead and pressured the Roman government to execute Jesus in his place. Jesus was tortured and bruised, spit upon and mocked. They hung him on a cross as a spectacle for all to see, and they drove nails through his hands and pressed a crown of thorns into his temple. When he breathed his last breath, they took him off the cross and buried him in a tomb and rolled a huge stone in front of it to seal his body in. And this should have been the end of the story, but after three days when his followers came to visit his body, they found the stone in front of the tomb rolled away and to their shock and awe, the body of Jesus was nowhere to be found. 
And over the next week or so, Jesus appeared to his followers alive and well, living and breathing. He had conquered death and with all power and authority had risen from the grave, just like he said he would. See, this is the power of the Easter story. It's, it's actually a story that is still happening today. Because if we choose to believe in his claims that he has proven over and over, he promises to rise us out of our graves too, no matter how far gone we think we are. Easter, you know how this story ends. Jesus rises from the dead. The greatest event in the history of the world. I don't know about you, but sometimes whenever I read the Bible and I hear about palm branches and Roman soldiers and tombs, it can be difficult to say, how does what happened then actually relate to right here, right now? With 24-7 access to everything, everybody, with Google and Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, what if we tried to take that and brought it here? What would that look like? This year at Lifehouse, we're going to do just that. We're going to take the Easter story, what happened there, and see what would it look like right here and right now. There's no coming back from this.
disappointment, anger, sadness, confusion, hopelessness. These may be words that describe your past year, but this is exactly how the disciples felt right after Jesus was crucified. I mean, think about it for a second. Jesus was supposed to bring them political freedom. He was supposed to bring them national security and global power. But now he's dead and hope, hope is gone. Imagine being Peter for a second. Imagine being Peter. One moment you're looking Jesus dead in the eye and you look and say, I'll never deny you. I'll never deny you. And then just a few short hours later, they ask about him and you say, I never knew him. Never knew him. Or imagine being Mary Magdalene. Jesus literally delivered you from being tormented by seven demons. You lived your life watching him, you know, heal the sick and bring the dead to life and change the hearts of the most twisted, evil sinners. But now he's dead and hope is gone. And all of those feelings that you felt that from before are now beginning to creep back into your life. Anxiety, depression, and all he wanted to do is numb the pain. <laughs> and imagine Thomas, <laughs> doubting Thomas. You, you, you were skeptical about Jesus to begin with, but then Jesus dies. And all of those things that you thought those worries that you had, the concerns that you had, all were confirmed. You see, when Jesus was crucified and he died, from their vantage point, the story was over. The story had ended. They had forgotten what Jesus had told them. He actually told them that this was going to happen. But in the midst of their sorrow and their loss, they forgot about it. I mean, I get it. I mean, what happens when the hero of the story dies? What happens when the marriage ends or when the business fails? Or what happens when your health is steadily declining or the loved one that you care so much about passes away? What happens when the world is hit with a pandemic and the entire thing is shut down? What happens when your life doesn't look anything like you thought it was going to look like. What happens? But there is another question. There is another question. What if this is just a scene? Granted, it's a terrible, heart-wrenching, anxiety-ridden scene, but yet it's still just a scene in another movie, in a bigger story, right? What if it's just a scene? I think oftentimes, we live our lives in the, going through these scenes and we think that that is literally it and it's just whatever scene we're in is just the end and we're stuck there. It's like picking a scene out of a movie and saying that that's the entire movie when there's so much more to this story than just that one moment. And your life is the exact same way. We live, these lives, live our lives in these scenes and we think that's it, but God has so much more. Now I'm telling you, if your story hasn't ended, if there's still breath inside of your lungs, then there's still hope. And God is going to take these scenes and create purpose. And he's still writing the story. So in the end, it is this brilliant masterpiece. You see what God does is he takes the darkest scenes in our lives and he glorifies them and he gives them purpose and meaning and something that we should stick around for all the way until the end. You see, just like your story, the disciple story wasn't done yet either. No, 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 no. It was far from done. So remember, don't let the scene that you're in define the story that God is writing for you today.
none of those things they said about you were true. I know firsthand who you really were. You healed me of my deepest pains, freed me from my darkest demons. Remember you this way. Mary, do not be afraid. You will not find his body here. Just as he said, he has risen.
story, right? Like all these prophecies about this man named Jesus to come and save the world. And sure enough, he shows up and he fulfills all of these prophecies, lives a sinless, perfect life where he doesn't break any of the commandments. And then he proclaims that he's God, but so that's a big problem, right? So his people decide to scheme against him and they murder him and kill him in the most brutal way possible. And then Mary shows up to the tomb to prepare the body and make sure it's still nice. And the, the stone is rolled away. Uh, Jesus is alive. He is resurrected. What a story, man. What a story. But that's the thing. This isn't a story. This isn't fictional. We have actual written documentation that proves that Jesus really was a man who came and lived a perfect life according to his, even his family. We have documented proof that he was then schemed against, murdered, and put into the ground, and then resurrected. This isn't a fictional fairy tale. And see, for most of us, when we hear that, we run, the question really is, becomes, what does it have to do with me? What does it have to do with my everyday life? Well, you know, that's a fair question. But you know what, Paul gives us a great starting point. Paul in, begins to talk to us about uh, who, the, who Jesus revealed himself to after he resurrected from the dead. And so according to Paul, Jesus came back and saw Cephas. He saw his 12 disciples, revealed himself to 500 people, then revealed himself to the apostles, and then later on actually revealed himself to Paul along the road to Damascus. Did you catch that? Jesus revealed himself to over 500 people after he was resurrected from the dead. Over 500 eyewitness accounts that Jesus rose again from the dead. This is not a fairy tale. This is not fiction. And if that truly happened, that means that Jesus was who he said he was. Everything was real. And that if that's true, that means he is God. And if, that, and if he is God, that means that he has given us an opportunity to receive peace, to receive joy, to receive change in our lives through him. All we have to do is accept him into our hearts, into our lives, accept that free gift gift of salvation and proclaim him as king over our lives. The question is no longer, is the story real? We know for a fact that the story is real. The question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to draw closer to it and take a second look? Or are you just going to completely reject it? Now, I got to ask you this. If your life depended on it, if your life depended on it, would you draw closer and take a second look? The question is simple. What are you going to do with it? Will you choose to believe? I'm not skeptical. I'm not cynical. I'm just a realist. I follow the science. And the facts are, he's dead. For once, I decided to go out on a limb. Maybe he is the one we've been waiting for. <laughs> but maybes aren't foolproof. No man can actually do the things he claimed he would do. <laughs> Jesus was a liar. And I was a fool for believing anything that man had to say. Never again. Yup. Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. What? Jesus? The man that we seen die the other day and the news just confirmed that he's dead? Is alive. And he talked to you. Nah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm gonna have to see it. I'm going to have to see it for myself. Nah, I don't think I'm coming through tonight. I don't know. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. Calm down. Calm down. I might. I'll come through. I'll come through. All right. All right. All right.
we gathered inside of the room with hope that you become soon but I couldn't help but to stand in this belief cause I didn't What do we do now that we've heard the story? How do we respond? I ask because a story like this demands some type of response. If Jesus really is all that he said he was, then this changes everything. If Jesus really did rise from the dead and there were so many people who witnessed it firsthand, then now we have some choices to make. The main one being, will we believe? Will we believe all of the evidence that points so strongly to Jesus being more than just a good man or a holy prophet, but the very Son of God who came to save us from ourselves? Will we believe that we are in need of such a Savior as we examine our own hearts and actions and see how far from perfect we actually are? That we are not always strong enough or wise enough to handle all that life throws our way? that we have wounds too deep for us or anyone else to heal, that no matter what passions we pursue, we're never truly satisfied in the end and we are always left wanting. If we were honest, we all need a savior and we need a powerful one, one that understands our weaknesses and has felt our pain, one that is patient enough to walk with us through the challenging terrain of life, and at the same time is stronger than the things we face, even stronger than death itself. The Bible makes it clear, history has already spoken, that savior is Jesus. The only question left to answer at this point is, will you believe in him? You know, one of the things that I love about the resurrection story is how Jesus reacts to his disciples and his followers when he comes back from the dead. And one of the reasons I love it is because Jesus is so kind and compassionate to those that followed him that he 
he didn't bash them. It's kind of like when he came back and he said, hey, you can see the holes in my hands. You can, you can see the hole in, in my side. That Jesus was not like, I told you this, y'all. I told you this was going to happen because he did. He did tell them that he was warning his disciples and letting them know, hey, this was going to happen. But he was, he didn't come back and throw it in their face. He was kind and compassionate with their doubts with their worries and with their fears. And I mean, you, you, you just saw Peter, right? Peter was like, hey, I'm never going to deny you. And he was the first one denying him. You had Thomas, who was already a doubter, a skeptic. And when Jesus died, he thought all of my doubts and all of my skepticism is validated. But when Jesus came back, even with their fears and with their doubts, he was kind and he was compassionate with them. And that just makes me feel like I'm not crazy. Do you know what I'm saying? Because following, following Christ can be full of fears, can be full of doubts, can be full of skepticism. But what we see is that in that, Jesus is kind and Jesus is compassionate with your fears, your doubts, and your worries. And that's what he invites you to bring to him even during this Easter season. Because I know the world has been crazy. Maybe your life has been crazy. And it just seems like doubt you know, or, you know, faith in God, it just seems like is, is becoming less and less. And there's more skepticism and there's more fear and there's more worry. And we can just seem like God is gone, like Jesus is gone. But what I want to invite you to do is, is, is just say that like Jesus invites you to come to him with your doubts, with your worries and with your fears because he is kind and he is compassionate. But you need to be reminded today about some things about the resurrection of Jesus because it changed human history. There is no event in the history of the world that has changed it like the resurrection. You can see this even, even with regards to the Christian faith. Without the resurrection of Jesus happening, it fails. Because the resurrection of Jesus is the one thing that makes Christianity different from every other religion. We just did not need, there, there, we, what our world did not need was just some other religion to come and give us a set of rules and tell us we're bad and tell us we're going to hell and, and just give us another set of rules that we needed to follow. We did not need that. We needed somebody to save us and rescue us and help us because we could not help ourselves. And that is what Jesus did when he resurrected from the grave. And that is what makes Christianity different. Essentially, the resurrection says we can't save ourselves. We cannot beat death. All of us die. But Jesus is the only one who death could not hold him down because sin ultimately brings death. But, but Jesus never sinned, so death could not hold his physical body down. And, and so what we see is that Jesus rising from the dead is what makes Christianity different. Muhammad didn't rise from the dead. Buddha didn't rise from the dead. The 300 million Hindu gods did not rise from the dead. Jesus is the one, the only God that said, I will resurrect. And he did it. And people saw him. They documented it. They wrote it down. And what we have now is a reliable firsthand account of Jesus rising from the dead. But it is so central to the Christian faith. Like you can't, you don't have Christianity without the resurrection. Even Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, a couple things that Paul said, that if the resurrection did not happen, this is what Paul said. He said, preaching is useless. He said, faith is useless. He said, we're still in our sins. He said, the dead are still lost. He said, we are to be pitied. And he, Paul was like, let, just let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. If, if this rising from the dead thing did not happen. So y'all, it is so central to the Christian faith. And that is why we take this day and it is the Super Bowl. It is the day we celebrate the fact that death does not win. But even the fact of the, res the resurrection, if you think about it, meets a core human longing that we have. Because y'all, I don't know, like, we live it, like, we want to live. 
Like, like there is this core longing in people, in humanity, that they've been searching for the fountain of youth. And I mean, we, we have a world that's trying to cheat death and beat death. And I mean, I've said this the past couple years, but even Google is getting in on this whole trying to beat death thing, where they've started something called Project Calico, where they are actually striving to figure out a way to beat death. Why? Because we have this longing in us to live. Even when our body is cut, when our body's hurt, like our body is designed to fight for life. And what I think we find in the resurrection of Jesus is a core longing fulfilled. That when Jesus beat death and defeated death, he just didn't do it for himself. He did it to meet the core longing in our hearts that we long to live. What the resurrection says is that what is in our hearts is true, that death does not have to be final. I love what Jesus said about himself. One of the things that, well, one one of the statements that Jesus said about himself, he said this in John 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. And what Jesus was saying was, he's like, look, I'm going to be the one that's going to go and beat down the door of death. And if you put your faith and trust in me, you can follow me. You can follow me into the doorway of death. But you do not have to stay there because with your life, death does not have to be the final thing. Jesus says, if you follow me, even though you physically die, you will spiritually live for eternity. And Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. And because of this reality being true and this longing of our heart being met, what this actually does is it actually gives us a hope to live for right now. Because here's here's the thing, as a follower of Jesus Christ and you knowing that even if you feel like you don't have to fear physical death, that what it gives you right here and right now, and this is what I think is so, is so important, like how does the resurrection affect your right here, your right now life? What it gives you is it gives you a boldness and it gives you a confidence to live your life without fear, to live your life with hope, because you know if death itself cannot even hold you down, if death itself is not the final doorway, then you can live this life with a boldness and confidence that comes from God himself. I love what it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says this here. It says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. What is, what is Paul saying here? He's saying, look, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same spirit that enters you when you start to follow Jesus. And he is saying, if that life gave, if that spirit gave life to Jesus, that same spirit lives in you so you can actually live your life with victory. You can live your life in light of the fact of death is not the final doorway. You can live your life knowing that you can be bold and confident because you have the spirit of God living inside of you, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And this is what it it does. It helps you to see your life differently. It helps you to see circumstances differently because you know if death itself does not even, can't even hold you down, then you can see every such, it it can become a lens that you can see your life through. That you can start to see things differently because you know pain and hurt and confusion and worry and anxiety and all of these things that life throw, throws at us. If you see it through the lens of the fact of, I got the spirit of God living in me, then you will start to live your life with a brand new confidence and a brand new boldness. Why? Because of the resurrection 
of Jesus. I love what 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3 says. It says, it says this here. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I love that it says a living hope that it is not a dead hope. It is something that we can live with and walk in, in our daily lives to help us and propel us towards who God is and who God has called us to be. And y'all, that is what we need to be reminded of on this Resurrection Sunday. It's what you are filled with. It's simply a reminder to say you are filled with the resurrection power of Jesus. And if Jesus lived, you live. You know, my heart and goal as, as a pastor each Easter Sunday is to not just have people celebrate Easter, but truly experience the power of it. Like truly, not, like to not just come and celebrate a day, but to really experience the power that lies within Easter. And that's what I want to invite you to do today. It is not to just celebrate a day where we got eggs and where you got family pictures and you're probably going to have a great Easter meal, but to really experience the power of Easter today. And that requires, though, a response. I believe this, the resurrection of Jesus, no matter who you are, where you're from, how old, like who you are, it requires a response. This, this news is too good. The death has been defeated and you can live forever because of what Jesus did on the cross in your place and for your sin and rose and defeated Satan. Said, like this news requires a response from us. And that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do right now. And typically right now, this is the point in the service that I would kind of tell you, bow your head and close your eyes and, you know, let's, let's, let's all do do a response time, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm, I'm just going to simply ask, keep your head up, your eyes up. And I just want to simply ask you to take a survey of where you're at with the Lord. And we did our annual Easter survey earlier. And, and this is going to be the second part of that. And what I just want you to do is to simply be honest and candid about where you are in your relationship with the Lord. And really there's four choices. So really what we're gonna do is a spiritual survey. And really there's four choices. And just know before you choose one of these four choices, just know you are one. So before you choose one, just know that you are one. <laughs> and the first one, A, is simply this, that, that you already have a real relationship with Jesus. Today is, a, is about you celebrating and experiencing what Jesus has done for you. You're a follower of Jesus and you are walking in resurrection life and resurrection power. Uh, with this survey, you would choose A if that is you. But possibly you might choose B. And B is, st stands for you need to actually begin or possibly begin again a relationship with the Lord today. Maybe you've never made a decision to make Jesus Lord of your life, to follow him, to receive this gift of eternal life that Jesus gives, or possibly you, you grew up in church or possibly you were following Jesus, but you know, you've fallen off and you know, you need to come back today. Maybe you would, you would, if you were candid, if you were completely honest, you would say my, my inventory today, if I was to take, if I was to take inventory. I need to choose B and say, I need to begin a relationship with God today. Or possibly you would choose C and C simply stands for maybe you need to consider your decision a bit more first. You know what? Maybe you, you say, John, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure yet. I, I've, I, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate it. But I'm, st I'm still wrestling inside. I'm not 100% sure yet. And possibly you would say, John, I'm, I'm, I'm C. Like, I need to consider this a bit more first before I make a decision. And we just want to say that that's totally fine. I'm totally cool with that. 
And just, just know that LifeHouse is a place for you where you can come and you can wrestle when you can figure things out and, 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 and you can consider before you make a decision. And I think Jesus actually appreciates that. Okay, so possibly you would say, see, but possibly you might uh, define yourself today as, as being D. And D simply stands for like, you don't ever intend to make a decision to follow Christ. And you just, you're just like, John, I, I, I get it. I know what Jesus did, but I, I just don't ever intend on following him. And look, if that's you, I, I, I just want to say, have the courage to, to put that down. You don't, you're, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, but, but at the same time, just know if, if you put D, if you choose D, that uh, we're going to be praying for you because we believe Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for you. And through what Jesus did on the cross in your place and for your sin and rising and defeating Satan's sin and death, he offers you the gift of eternal life to where death does not have to be the final doorway for you. And, but look, if that is where you are, we want you to choose D. Look, no matter which one you choose, we would love if you would take a second and let us know. And the best way to let us know what, what, uh, what letter you chose in this spiritual survey is to simply text it. Just, just the letter to 757-690-2401. I promise we're not gonna, I promise we're not gonna bother you. Uh, but at the same time, we do just wanna follow up with you, especially if you chose B. If, if you would just, whatever letter you chose, text that in, we would love to know so we can get a survey of where you are in your relationship with the Lord. But right now, what I want to do, if you chose me and you say today, I need to begin a relationship with the Lord, I just want to pray with you. And I I just want to simply, (coughs) to simply, to, to simply ask if you would just repeat this prayer right after me, if you chose me. And I just want to take your hand and put it in Jesus's hand this Easter day. Uh, and, ha- and, and simply lead you to Jesus so you can begin a relationship with him. Just repeat this prayer softly or quietly or even in your heart right, af- right after me. Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, today, I want to begin a relationship with you. Thank you for dying on, my, for dying on the cross in my place and for my sin. And Jesus, today, I receive new life in you, resurrection life in you. Jesus, thank you. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that God did something supernatural in your life today. That he is putting his spirit inside of your spirit. And you're going to feel and sense the resurrection power. Of God, and please text in B and let us know that 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 uh, that you chose that today for your spiritual survey. We would love to follow up with you and give you some next steps in following Christ. Well, Lifehouse family, we would, we just sincerely want to say one one more time, thank you for joining us for Lifehouse Easter online. We pray that that you enjoyed it. We pray that. You saw the Easter story in a brand new way today. And we just sincerely pray that you have a great day. But before we sign off today, we do want to tell you and show you for those that call our church home, we we want to celebrate what God did through our partnership with Sleep in Heavenly Peace last Saturday. What an incredible day. We had over 40 volunteers out. We built over 20 bunk beds to get 40 kids sleeping off the floor in our city. We were able to give thousands of dollars to to them. And we just want to show you a quick snippet of all that God did. And because of your giving and because because of your generosity, we are seeing communities changed. We are seeing people loved and served and fed. And we just want to say sincerely thank you for that. So before we sign off today, uh, we we want to show you a a little bit of what God did and also give those of you who call our church home the opportunity to give financially today and support the mission of what God is doing through our church. Lifehouse family, we love you. We pray you have a great day and we'll see you 
next Sunday. Hey LifeHouse family, this is the part of our service where we want to give you the opportunity to continue worshiping through financially investing in the vision of LifeHouse. Now if you're new here at LifeHouse and this isn't your church home, please know there's no obligation or pressure to give today. This online worship service is our gift to you. But if you do call LifeHouse home, we hope that you are excited to give towards the mission and vision that God has given LifeHouse, which is to see all people experience life change through Christ by following Jesus, doing life together, getting in the game, and leaving a legacy. But before we give today, we want to say our giving prayer together. This prayer prepares our hearts to give and refocuses us on why we give, that we don't give to get anything from God. Instead, we give because God has so freely given to us. Let's pray this together. The words will be on the screen. Lord, there is nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and am belong to you. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is not your way, O Lord. Instead, those who call Jesus their Lord believe that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Give me the strength and grace to steward all you've given me for the forwarding of your mission, to trust you to provide for my every need, and to be generous because you, Father, are generous. Amen. Because of your generosity this month, we were able to partner with Sleep in Heavenly Peace to build bunk beds to get kids off of the floor. Here's how your generosity impacted our community. To give today, simply click the link the online hosts have dropped in the comment section, or you can go to givetolifehouse.com. Thank you for your generosity in helping us bring life change through Christ to all people. You can stay connected with us throughout the week on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We love you, LifeHouse family, and we'll see you next week. Church isn't something you just attend. It's a community you find safety in, where you can belong before you believe where you can wrestle with the hard questions of life, where you can build genuine, diverse relationships with people no matter your age, race, gender, orientation, or political party, where you can get involved and engaged in serving the community and world around you. That's why we are inviting you to join us live and in person for our worship experiences at Regal Kiln Creek every Sunday at 9.30 and 11 a.m. Now don't worry, your safety is our number one priority which is why RSVPs are required to ensure capacity regulations and masks are also required. And we have amazing in-person and online teams ready to safely care for your children, ages nursery to fifth grade. Of course, LifeHouseOnline.com is always available for our LifeHouse Online family tuning in from coast to coast. But y'all, there's nothing like being together live. So make plans to join us and RSVP at LifeHouseNN.com.